Hey guys, and welcome to the one where I try to convince you to become less obsessed with learning code. So before I jump into the topic of today's video, I have three small sidebars. Number one, it's been raining here for like three and a half days straight, and it has really put a damper on my mood and like my ability to, I don't know, focus and get things done. It's just like really nasty weather. And for some reason, I don't feel motivated when it's nasty. I don't know if anybody else gets this way, but like rain for three days, like no sun at all. Just ugh. Number two is I wanted to give a big thank you and a big shout out to everybody who has subscribed and follows along in these vlogs and these videos because I'm really, really close to 2000 as I record this, which is amazing and mind blowing and awesome. And I just wanted to say thank you guys so very much. All right, and number three is a question. So I've done a couple live videos and I really enjoy them. I enjoy interacting with you guys live in real time. One thing that I don't enjoy is that I don't enjoy YouTube's interface for live video that much. And I also don't like the fact that I have to use my webcam. The video quality is kind of terrible. I just don't love that aspect of it. I don't love doing it on YouTube. So I have a question. And if you wanna leave your thoughts in the comments down below, that would be greatly appreciated. I would love to hear what you guys think about this. So I'm thinking about possibly starting a Twitch channel. Now, Twitch, if you don't know, is an online platform for live video. And most of what it's used for is to stream live gameplay content, like video games. Now, I'm not a very big video game player, and I not all of that good, but I do play some from time to time. And I was thinking I could go on Twitch and be live and be playing a video game as something that's entertaining in the background to watch, but still do live video and interact with all you guys and answer questions that you have. And we can hang out like we do on live video, which I love. So if the Twitch channel is something that you think you would be into or you'd wanna see or wanna come hang out with and have a good time, let me know down in the comments below. And if you think it's absolutely stupid and pointless, then let me know that too. All right, and now back to the regularly scheduled content of this video. Ugh, stop learning how to code, Aaron. I mean, that's what this entire channel is about. Listen, sassy Aaron, I did not say stop learning how to code. I just said become less obsessed with it. So let me explain what I'm talking about. So I see it a lot in the comments and emails that I get from this channel about learning to code, how to learn how to code, when you should be ready to have a job and all of that stuff. And what I see a lot of the times is that people give me this long exhaustive list of all the things they've worked through learning how to code. So they've been on Treehouse and they've been on Udemy and they've worked through Free Code Camp or whatever it is. And that's great. They have a lot of these learned skills that they've picked up through all of these online courses. That's amazing, that's awesome. That should be step one for anybody who's trying to get into the development scene. So what I'm talking about when I say becoming obsessed with learning is that I do see a bit of a problem where you take 47 courses online and Leo, I know. So what I do see as a problem is that you've completed all of this awesome coursework and like I said, it's amazing, but you have nothing really to show for it. Now, a lot of the times when you take these classes, you do build things and that is really good, but also you're kind of handheld in these projects and taken down this and there's no real sense of failure because you can just play the video and get to the point where it gives you the answer of what you need to put. And this is a completely valid way of learning. Like I said, this should be your first step on your journey to getting a job as a developer. But what I wanna to stress to you is that it's not the only step. See, you should be able to make things on your own. Doing that is hard to do when all you're doing is learning online. And it's never really too early to start building stuff on your own. If you only know HTML and CSS, you can make a really cool static web page on your own. You don't have to be a JavaScript guru to go out there and build awesome things, right? And typically what I hear as the biggest excuse for not going out and building your own projects is that you don't really have any ideas, you don't really know what to build when it comes to personal projects or trying to build things on your own. This is completely understandable and most people who have jobs as developers don't have to come up with their own ideas for the apps they're making because they're working at a company that has an app or they're working for an agency who's creative team comes up with the idea for an app for a company. It, it's not always on the junior developer to decide that, hey, we're gonna make this Facebook thing or whatever it is. But the one thing that I can tell you that will get you the closest to being in a real development environment is to have a project that you're working on and not have any idea how to solve it and going to Stack Overflow and Google and Mozilla Developer Network and figuring it out just figuring it out and not having someone who's been doing this for 20 years teaching you exactly every step you need to do it. 
that will get you farther along and closer to real development for a real company than just about anything else. So once again, I just wanna stress, while I do endorse Treehouse and Udemy and learning in that vein, and I link them down below because of that, I don't think they're the only thing that's going to be able to get you a job as a developer. So I have a challenge for you. So if you've already started or already completed a few courses on development, I, I want you to step back from those for just one second. And this is the challenge. So if you have an idea for an app that you've been wanting to build for a long time, start working on it. Start working on it right now. It doesn't have to get all the way to like an MVP. It doesn't have to be finished. It doesn't have to be completely functioning, but start working on it. So if you don't have an idea for an app that you want to build, then this is where you need to do some research. Find a website that you really like or a web app that you really like and start to build it. Just clone it. Just, just do your version of it and do it on your own. If you get stuck, by all means, check out Stack Overflow. Do it and figure it out in your own mind. If you need help with design for something that you wanna redesign, by all means, check out Dribbble. It's an awesome resource for finding awesome designs. And think about the apps you use every day and what you love about them and what you don't love about them. And if there's something you wanna change, then, then build it and change it. Do it on your own. You don't have to build the entirety of Twitter, but being able to show a newsfeed and like, get fake data from a server and put it up on the page by yourself without someone holding your hand is amazing. There are tons of free APIs that you can connect your front end website to. They range from Spotify and Giphy and Weather all the way to really crazy intricate things. And there's like writing quote ones. I mean, there's thousands of them. The possibilities are endless. Look at free APIs to connect to and make a project based on one of those. So why am I giving this advice? Well, there's two reasons. One, it gets you out of your comfort zone. You don't have that handheld tutorial showing you the way, and there is a chance of failure that can push you to be greater and to be better than you were before. And two, after you build this awesome project, you have something unique to yourself that you can put on your portfolio. Yeah, if you go through Udemy courses, you have some projects that you can put on your portfolio, but anybody else who's done that Udemy course also has them. And that's not to say that you shouldn't put them on there. If they're really awesome, then they're really awesome and you built them. But having your own personal thing that you built on your own is so much more powerful. All right, guys, that's all I have for today. And I really hope that I didn't give too much tough love in this video. I just think it's really important advice that some people could really hear right now. If you like this video, feel free to hit that thumbs up button because they make me smile. And if you wanna leave a comment about this video, anything, in it, by all means do that. And if you have an opinion on me starting a Twitch channel, feel free to leave that down there too. If you want to keep following along in this journey, hit that subscribe button. As always, thank you so much. I appreciate all of your guys' support. Like I said at the beginning, I'm really close to 2,000 subscribers and that is insane to me. So thank you. I appreciate it so much. I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your day and I will see you again very soon. Bye.